Okay, so tell me, do you have any experience in real life? Uh, back when I was probably, I'm 40 now, so back when I was 15, 16, I used to play at the Y, <laughs> and that's it. Like maybe, so maybe like a few months that way I really played, you know, gave it any serious time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, all right. Not for real, though. And in the it's, game, you've, you've played for a while? Uh, yeah, about, you... I think a little over a month, maybe. Uh, okay. I'm just not going nowhere. Yeah, well, you're, you're sticking around uh, at, the, at the start level, which is not bad either. A lot of people go down, of course. So. Yeah, I, I went down a few times. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You're also left-handed? Um, yeah, I'm left-handed. Are you using the adapter or just a controller? Uh -huh. Yeah, the yeah. adapter. That's good. Uh, could you tell me really quick before we start what your pedal uh, settings are? Yeah, hold on. Let's see here. Um, yeah, I've pulled with them a few times. Um, 85 on bounce, 90 on spin, and 107 on throw. All right. Uh, that's not that bad. I'm tracking at 55, 0 0.55 on the... Tracking at 55, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe throw is a little bit low, but uh, we'll see. Uh, it's it's already okay. not zero, which is which is yeah. good. Yeah. Well, I tried I tried it at one, and then and then like what it's the default one twenty or whatever, and so then I just got somewhere in the middle, I think, and just yeah yeah yeah. Kind of, uh, yeah one hey, one is basically like ball, and you know it sell like sails over the you know like it just flies on out there. <laughs> I don't like it, but yeah yeah. But then after a while, if you have the right technique, then you know it helps right, you. Right. Land the that's, ball that, a bit easier. See, that's yeah. where I. What, that's what I think is that I don't want to keep. Like I've watched a lot of stuff on YouTube. I have played with a lot of people, and then, so like one guy, he tells me all the time, he's pretty good, and he's got a coach. He said, "You're not stop doing this," you know, like. And so if you don't know the fundamentals, you're not gonna. You know, you're not gonna. All right. Progress. All right. So what I usually do for the first session is uh, go through the basic strokes and see okay. if we can correct something um, and see what you do already. So. Um, okay. Um. Yeah. Normally, I start with the person's forehand, but since you're a left-hander, we can yeah. do backhand or we can start forehand, whatever you prefer. Either, either one, it doesn't matter. You you choose, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's let's start with the backhand because okay. I always get used to that as well because left-handers always play to my backhand first as well. Okay. All right. All right. All right, all right, all right. So I can see what you're doing. You're like you're you're centered really well on the table, and then you're leaning, uh -huh. right? So yeah, the, idea, yeah. the idea in the backhand is that you're behind the ball coming in, right? Uh -huh. Square behind it. Uh -huh. uh, your feet are actually at 90 degrees to the ball coming in, and you play in front of your chest. Okay. okay. So you don't go too much to the side. You just go straight, straight okay. forward. So it's, I want to be in front of it though. Like, how do you show it? This is like mostly underarm and a bit of wrist, right? Okay. Okay. So, let's see. Right. Oh. The touch is decent, to be honest. Like, I don't have much trouble putting the ball on the table. Try to play the ball here. Nice. Sorry. Good. Good. All right. So it might seem a little bit restrictive because before you could probably use more of your arm. But this right. gives uh, more control, and it also it, it allows you to be to be better prepared to play a forehand because if you have to come all the way from here, it's much further to go to there, right? So this the idea of this is that in the backhand you have a bit of stability. Uh -huh. It's a bit harder to play heavy. It's also possible, but then you need to use your shoulders a bit more and your knees. Uh, uh -huh. But the idea is that in the backhand you have a bit more stability in the forehand. You have a bit more power, right? Yeah, my forehand is but definitely the, my weak my weak spot. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. harder because in the backhand you can be behind the ball and it's easy to line up your paddle with the ball. Even if it's a little bit to the side, it's easy. But the forehand, like it's passing in front of you, 
you know, <laughs> and it's a little bit harder to to uh, to right. see the point of contact. So we'll see that in a in a second. Um, <laughs> okay. So you stay nice and behind the ball. Well, you're already doing the movement quite well. So you brush down up a little bit, right? And it's mostly forward still the drive because we're not really doing topspin yet. So it's mostly forward, but a little bit down up. You're doing that already. So okay. that's pretty cool. The easiest moment to hit the ball is at the highest point. Uh -huh. you're also doing that more or less. Uh, if you have it up, you have to lift it a little bit more with spin and stuff. So it's a bit harder mm -hmm. to early, which actually in a modern table tennis, they do it a lot to be faster. Uh, mm -hmm. a bit harder to do, but it's faster. So that's something that you can play with. So when you're training, you can try to catch a bit sooner, a bit later, and see if you get a feeling for all of that, right? Okay. But right. have you been using uh, any drills in the ball launcher? Um, yeah, like uh, I do. I usually start off with the ball launcher. Yeah. And, but some of those like that, like your advanced ones, like when yeah. you have all four of them, man, they're just, they're rough. <laughs> it's yeah. rough for me. I think I stand maybe a little too close to the table, too. I know uh, it's like yeah. in, back up a little bit. Sometimes that helps me out tremendously. Yeah, that's true. So I would say that in general for the back end, it's a good idea because because you catch it so much early, earlier. Going a little bit back gives you a little bit more space. Um, on the forehand, since you're playing besides your body, it's already a bit later in the in the flight of the ball that you touch it in general. Um, but yeah, the advanced ones um, shouldn't have to worry about that too much because then you're really working on, on your legs already. And of course, first it's better to have the strokes well done, right? So talking about legs, so your feet are supposed to be like slightly wider than your shoulders, right? Okay. And your knees are a little bent so you can get nice and behind the ball. Um, how low you go depends a little bit on, you know, your style of play, but also how you feel, right? So ideally, you can get used to getting really low and then you have a really good view of the ball. Yeah. Uh, but that's a little bit up to you. You don't have to force yourself. Okay. But then, in both forehand and backhand, you will start after a while using your legs and, of course, bending your knees and then coming a little bit up. It gives you a little bit of extra power. Oh, yeah. Good. Sorry. I like, I like your back end. It's it's going a little bit all over the place still, right? So um, yeah, to yeah. guide it, yeah, you can you can kind of finish your stroke towards the direction mm -hmm. where you want it to go, right? Okay. So if you want to play there, or mm -hmm. there, if you want to play there, you go through there, right? There you go. Good. Good. Nice. Yeah, very good feeling for the ball. Did you do you play any other racket sports in real life? No. All right. I, I guess it's not a big thing in the U.S. Not, not a lot of people seem to play it. They but play I, tennis and stuff. Huh? No, no. We got the well. We got the Oculus. My buddy had brought it over or whatever, and then I seen that table tennis game was like in the. Somebody had it on a list of the top games. Yeah. And I, I was reading, and then when I as soon as I played it, I was hooked. I told her, well, we didn't do anything but buy a four hundred dollar ping pong table. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. Like, I can turn on the Xbox now. I just play this. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. All right, so um, for now, I'm gonna leave the back end because it's actually quite good. Like before, you were playing more besides your body. Now you're already nice and behind it. I see what uh, you mean about having way more control up there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So let's take a look at the forehand. Forehand, basically, I used to say to put your foot. Quite a uh, your in your case your right no also your left foot because you're left-handed <laughs> uh, quite a bit behind your right foot but actually it's just a couple of toes just a little bit so My you right, uh, bit right foot behind them your left foot behind oh, okay but basically you're you're kind of in the same line as you were in the back end uh -huh. just a little bit less but it just okay. gives you a little bit of space to move your hips and then uh, because in the forehand most of the stroke in the beginning at least to give you stability comes from your body. Right, it might sound weird, but you barely move your arm, right? So what I'm moving is um, my knees, like this, my hips, uh -huh. my shoulders, and then I just let my arm follow that movement, right? Uh -huh. 
So what creates instability is is when when you kind of slap it or you really try to use your forearm and stuff. But if you just let it be guided by your um, body, it will feel much better, right? Okay. And there's in the in the back end, it's not as important. In the back end, you have kind of a weight shift from the right to the left leg in your in the for left hander, and uh -huh. the forehand is actually a bit more important from left to right. So you kind of shift your weight while you're doing like a small twist. That's mm -hmm. what you can uh, control. Let's see. Bad. So you're doing something in the back end. In the back end, you seem to trust that you will lift it. Definitely. That's very good because you catch it and you brush it, you yeah. really do it naturally. In the forehand, not so much. <laughs> so you play flat, right? So that's maybe really what your friend said as well. You can just, because um, you notice as well the ball is coming quite high. Yeah. And then you can do the same stroke, but just mm -hmm. close your bat angle a little bit. Okay. And right. the same as in the backhand, you try to go a little bit from down to up. So you, when, you, when you touch the ball, you lift it up. Right? Okay. Uh -huh. Again, the best point to touch it is the highest point. Good. Uh -huh. right. uh -huh. There's another thing. So what you're doing now is you're kind of wrapping up your ball. He says, I don't notice I'm doing that, but I guess, you know, it's like bad yeah. habit. It's hard. So, well, it's a bad and a good habit because at the highest level, you kind of start doing that again, but it's very, uh, how do you say it, small around, right? But in the beginning, it makes it harder to hit the ball because you have to hit it at the right moment because if it's a little bit too late or a little bit too early, your bat is not in the right angle, right? So it's easier to actually, so you're following this. You have to imagine that you want your blade to move only in the same plane as it is already. So you... you in the same plane if if you switch the plane you, yeah. you have to how do you say it? you have to work against your own uh momentum right okay. so just follow follow the plane that's that's already there and i get why you do it because you're a bit scared so you think i'll grab it like this and i'll go over but you don't have to worry about it you just trust that you will and in the beginning it doesn't matter if you miss you know just right and try and then at, at a while after a while you feel how much you actually brush the ball right Good. All right, so the legs are the same as in the back end, so a little bit more than shoulder width apart, a little bit bent, and then you can kind of use your legs to add that extra movement upwards. Okay. Nice. So you're already putting it, oh, sorry. A little bit of spin on it, and that's okay because that's a feeling that you kind of you can really use, you know, if you f get a feel for how you brush the ball. Because if you just hit it, it goes down. That's what you're scared of that it will just go into the net. But then if you brush it, it creates this arc, and that's what you're looking for, right? And basically, this 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 stroke because it's a basic stroke, it's just very small. You know, you just have it. Right bounce and you just give it a little brush a little brush and the idea is that this is a very compact fast stroke that you can use while you wait for an opportunity to play or have that, right? Good. all right now i just want to do something because you're left-hander as well i can come to the same spot and i'll yeah. call uh, a ball machine okay uh, it's on my side, okay. Um, let's see. Just to make sure I'm not running into any walls. So, <laughs> just put it right. That looks more or less fine. Height. Almost. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> okay, so now I have the options for the ball launcher, and I'll um, actually I think 
you can start with a basic drive. Uh, and I'll show you. I'll show you first. All right. I'll show you, and then you can take a look at how I move. So this is you know, when you start it. It always starts coming out of the top for some reason when you're a multiplayer. That's but it's just while it just comes right. All right. So. So what you want is this, just a very small compact stroke. Mm -hmm. Right now what you were doing is like you let it drop and then you do like this. Well, actually I'm gonna put slightly slower because we were playing slower before. So uh, foreign country. So yeah, it's more like this, right? So what you were doing is you were like letting it drop and then brushing it. And then, like I said, this is a good thing to learn because then you learn how to brush it. But you were doing mm -hmm. this, right? Right. A little bit open, but mm -hmm. you, you can really just close it because the ball coming in already has top spin on it, mm -hmm. so you don't have to give it much more to return it. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that is just like basically, like I said, you use your body and you just guide the ball over, right? So you're kind okay. of going towards where you want the ball to go again. All right. You can try. Try to get used to the rhythm. Yeah, that's it. Good. All right. So you can take a small step back. Okay. All right. And try to hit the ball a little bit more in front of you. Because now you drip to your hip almost. But uh, it's better if you hit it a little bit sooner. That's good. That's good. That's good. And now if you use a little bit more of your body to guide it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Like this. All right. Just move a little bit forward. Shift your weight from your uh, left foot to your right foot. That's it. That's it. And then you combine that with touching it a little bit earlier, and then you're gonna. That's it. Okay. That's it. Good. That's okay. It. I did it again. So, it goes. Don't worry. It's uh, that's good. So. It can take a little bit of time to get to get used to you know that that change, but actually it's, the idea is that it's easier, right? So instead of adding something extra on top of it, right, which makes it harder to to have that same that moment of contact, you really just decide uh, where your bat is going. You try to optimize the amount of time the ball has to hit your paddle, and then you just let it finish naturally. You don't have to do anything else. Okay. Right? So I hit the ball, and then. I can just let go, more or less. In the future, of course, the idea is that you play the ball mm -hmm. and then you recover as fast as possible for the next ball, right? But right now, you can just kind of get a feeling for it and let your stroke play out. Okay. I didn't ask you. You you know how to hold the paddle, right? You have it. In uh, yeah, I think so. I, um, I have like my finger is right on there, like and this? then mm -hmm. yeah, and then um, and then uh, these fingers aren't really t you know not. I'm not trying not to. I try not to grip it hard, but I do grip it hard sometimes. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Like, so the grip where you want to grip hard at the moment of contact maybe is your your index finger and your thumb. Everything right, right. else can be kind of loose, right? Even, even index finger and thumb, you don't want to press the pressure them too hard because if you do that, you will block your wrist. If you let it relax, you will have a lot more range, right? I do way better if I don't squeeze. Exactly. You know, I, exactly. It's, it's not something they always pay attention to in the beginning, but it's very important when you get better that you have this extra range to work with. I actually uh -huh. have limited range because I never, I, they never told me to to relax my wrist. So. Oh, squeezing too hard. Yeah, so when I when I really attack, it's my wrist is quite is quite heavy, heavily uh, engaged. I shouldn't be too much. All right, so um, it's not work. bad, honestly. Like just a couple of seconds, and I already see like a big improvement. Yeah, yeah, it feels a lot better too. Exactly. So um, then you can start playing with the timing. Like you can catch it a little bit earlier. Okay. See how that feels. Catch it a little bit later. See how much brush it needs to to clear the the table. And like I said, try to 
keep the paddle in like the same plane if you want to and the same plane as it is already in so it's anything that you want to do forward just uh -huh. do it with your body right See, that makes more sense what he was telling me i, I couldn't make sense of what he was saying like but i i, I know i'm doing it because i see it but you know yeah, i can yeah. see it at the end i was that is way out of whack but now you've explained it i, I think i understand it. it's never lost if you get touch like with what you were doing you can you can do that for example from from here and then do like more crazy spin at some point, right? Right. right. A bit lower. Like every feel basic stroke. Exactly. So this is the basic stroke that gives you uh, stability, right? And consistency. And then afterwards, you know, you can start adding anything that you want, any weird stuff, right? Okay. So if you have touch, like anything that you build out now that you have touch with is a good thing. You will be able to use it in the future. So. All right. Now Actually, that went that went quite fast. So it's already uh, something that you can train quite well mm -hmm. to, to pay attention to, you know, finish that you don't need because also that's a waste of time in the end. Once you go faster, that's also why you say like, the advanced rules are too fast because yeah. you're doing an extra thing. Well, you actually you could already be going right because it's just a small gotcha. stroke. It makes perfect sense there. So now let's take a look at the pushes, right? So okay. this. Seems a bit boring, but you probably already noticed when they serve short with yeah. a spin like this, yeah. you kind of have to push, otherwise, <laughs> because if, I mean, if you're not used to it or you don't know how to do it, you'll probably uh -huh. just, you know, kind of put it in the, in the back, in the bottom of the net, right? So this stroke, in opposition to the, the previous stroke where you're going uh, down up, this one you're mm -hmm. going a little bit up down, but still mostly forward. Because all basic strokes are basically, you know, drives and pushes. Is you're kind of pushing the ball, right? So, anytime you have to move your feet, like you have to step into the table, you always go with your leading foot first, which is your left foot. So you step into the table, and then you step out. Because right now you're doing all short balls, uh -huh. so you could stay here. But if uh -huh. you get used to that, then you're never prepared for the next ball. Right, right. right. At least you right. step in and you step out. You get used to it. Okay. And then you can step in and use your body to give like this extra speed to the ball. Or you can mm -hmm. step in, touch it lightly to try to keep it short, right? Okay. But then you need to step in, stop, and then to touch the ball. If you use okay. your body, you know. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, why do you want to be to use your body in this one as well when you're stepping in? Is because it's much harder for your opponent to deal with if it's really deep and fast, right? Mm -hmm. if it's, if you play it deep, but like, uh, wait, sorry, but like this, uh -huh. it will be easy to attack. But if you can give it like this extra acceleration, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they, they will have to move much more, right? If you put it in their belly or on their elbow. Yeah. So it's a good thing to think of both these things. So one is a faster shot that can be very surprising, right? To both sides. And the other one is to leave it short so they have to come and step into the deep. To the table a bit. Okay. Okay. You can try. Sound. So the timing for this stroke is uh -huh. actually earlier. So you want to touch the ball when it's still going up, so you can use a bit of the momentum to get it over the net. Okay. Trying to play it short. Shut. I don't worry, it's something you have to get used to. Ah. So that happens when you start going down up, and you're lifting the ball too much. So try to go basically mostly straight, right? Oh, straight ahead? Yeah, straight ahead. And maybe a little bit down up to give it a little bit of backspin. If you notice that it's going long. That's it, that's it. Good. Ah. Good. I didn't step. This may be harder than you expect, but it's very important for touch. Because yeah. you need to read the spin quite well, you need to work with the timing. So it can it can give you can give you a very good feeling for the ball if you were able to do this well will also help you understand serves and serve better yourself. So you can catch it. 
little bit dense because it's a little bit earlier. So before it's at the highest point. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. And after a while, you can start adding some angles and stuff to the to your bat. Uh, but you don't have to do that now. But like when you're practicing alone, uh, you can get a little bit earlier, a little bit later, and see how to how you have to change brushing the ball or if, or the angle of the bat to compensate. Now oh, you're doing very well. I'll, I'll show you for a second. All right. Yeah. All right. So I've learned more in 10 minutes than I have the whole time I've been playing. <laughs> All right. So yeah. It's going. It's ma mainly forward, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit, a little bit down. Mm -hmm. so you, can get, you can catch the backspin, right? Because in this case, on this ball, there's already backspin. Right? The ball coming in has backspin, and you give it. If you notice that it's going into the net, right, like this, uh -huh. right. you can open your angle a little bit more. Okay. Opening the angle means like this, right? Right, right. And then if you notice that it's going too high, right, you mm -hmm. push a little bit. Okay. Basically, in pushing, that's, that's where it is. Then later, if you catch it when a ball is coming down, you can start chopping, mm -hmm. right? Slicing. Okay. Okay. And then you're basic, basically using backspin to compensate. So instead yeah, that gives me a lot of problem when I play against people that can do that well. Yeah. But like, even if they do it well, you should be mm -hmm. able to push. So you push, if you notice, it's always going into, Jesus. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> if, <laughs> if you notice it's going into the net too much, yeah. it's the same thing. Just open it a bit more. So the ball jumps up a little bit more, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you notice as well that you're, it's always getting stuck in the in the net. You can also mm -hmm. use your legs a little bit to lift it a bit. So you go forward, and then you mm -hmm. you kind of yeah. use your body mm -hmm. just a little bit of lift. I think you I've can, been playing too lazy. I don't use my legs enough. Yeah, but I, I mean anybody in VR almost because you forget about your legs, you don't see them. Right. Yeah. Uh, but using your legs can always give you a little bit more stability in your stroke. Right. 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 Actually, your bat and your face are at a similar level, and it's easier to yeah. track your bat. Right? I noticed that if I really get down, you do get to see the whole table a lot better. Yeah, that's very true. So one last thing that I always say about pushes as well is, so in the beginning, a lot of people, they, they go sideways, right? They, they hit the ball like this. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't always have to do that. What you can also do is go straight forward with the head down. So yeah. like this, like this. So this this is very helpful. For example, if you're standing here and the ball mm -hmm. comes a bit too much to to the forehand side, mm -hmm. so having to move all the way over and get up and get under it, you can mm -hmm. just straight forward, right? Yeah, I see that on your videos, but I, ne I never could figure that out really. Yeah, <laughs> you can try. Good. Ah, yeah, it's a touch thing. Yeah, once you get the feeling for it, you don't have mm -hmm. to. Yeah, you don't have to really hit it hard because there's no spin, no top spin helping you land the ball on the table. And the other mm -hmm. still there. You know, if you add more spin, it will come down faster. In this case, if you add more force, it will it will fly off the table, right? So the idea is that right. you kind of try to control it. Once you control it, you can start adding more force and making sure that it still lands at the edge of the table. But this okay. will give you a better feeling for it. Of course, you have to watch out if you're not hitting the table. But it's, uh, it's, Technique definitely matters a lot. Yeah. So the only thing that I, like what I said in the beginning, that here you want to do if you want to keep it short, is step uh -huh. in and then kind of stop a second before you hit the ball so you're not using your uh, body's momentum anymore and that uh -huh. you keep it short. So you okay. just step in and give it a very light touch and okay. to see if you can keep it short. It's a lighter touch. It's a good start. So lighter touch. Light, light, lighter. Right. You're not really um, hitting it hard, and it gives you a bit more control in this stroke, right? So. So when you notice when you're hitting it softly and it's going into the net, right? Open. If you catch a little bit earlier, 
Okay. But in real life, it's stronger, right? In here, it's a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. um, the momentum of the ball going up will help you lift it a little bit. Okay. And then you just hit it ever so slightly, uh, and then bounce it twice. Try to push it so f much forward. Exactly. So this is this is one thing you're trying to keep it short, and if it bounces twice, you can't really attack, right? If it's low enough. And the other thing is to try and put it really deep, right? The middle yeah. is something where you don't want to be. You don't want to leave it yeah. long because then it's easy to attack. But yeah. I'm not saying that you have to control it to always be able to keep it short because I can't either in the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But training for it and getting touch for it, like it will give you a lot of information of how to work with that range that you have, like between deep and short. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. Okay. So just to show you as well, like after a while, you can start adding more side spin to make it easier to add extra spin. Uh -huh. Because if you go straight under, the ball kind of sits up and you have to really read the spin well to uh -huh. be able to do it well. But then when it bounces, because of all the backspin, it bounces mm -hmm. more upwards. Okay. Then if you're right. low, you add more mm -hmm. spin and it doesn't jump up that much. Right? Oh. And it can always help you because if they're playing pure backspin, uh -huh. go and you avoid the angle of backspin, you can ignore it a little bit. Right? Uh -huh. That's the next okay. step. Okay. Because I noticed as well, you had a bit of trouble keeping it on the table. Mm -hmm. Adding a little bit of side spin can help you. But. Honestly, the way that you pick this stuff up, mm -hmm. your ELO doesn't represent the, the touch that you have for the game. Like it's, I really just play people that's way uh, way above me. Like I don't really even mess with nobody under 16, 1700. So oh, I don't yeah. know. If, uh, but I don't know. Like the challenge, but yeah, no, that's I'm good. Not... No, I, I yesterday I gave training to somebody close to the 2000s as well, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, also our touch was okay, but like in terms of basic strokes, she's not far off from what you, where you were. So it's basically winning is probably at that point from, from your point to close 2000 is, is probably big parts mental as well, right? Choosing the right moment, choosing when to hold back. Uh, well, my serves is another thing that I'm not very good at. Yeah, so we'll look at that in, uh, in a bit as well. So, um, yeah, so the idea as well here, we're doing the basic strokes, is that it, it lifts a little bit off of the mental part. So if everybody else is just trying to make the right decisions, but you have a basic stroke that just lands from 1,500 to 1,800, you will start winning a lot of matches because you're just following the table. Right. I'm usually close with everybody. There's, I don't, I very rarely get blown all the way out. I mean, it happens, but you know, it's, in, but usually it's the close ones. It goes three, three games, and I end up losing. You know, that's usually how yeah. it goes. I can, I can see that. I can see that. And then you end up losing. Then the reason for that, then that can be very specific. So that depends. But I usually think like can be a part. They'll, they'll like by the third game, they've got me figured out. <laughs> they got my weaknesses figured out, probably. Right. 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 Well, this is like as you're as you're kind of a beginner, they can change very fast. Right? So you could see right now maybe in a in a in a bit your back end is very secure and your forehand is actually almost as secure because you know you you learn to control it. And then the whole game changes, of course, if you don't have better. You know, I used to not even want to use it, but now it's you know it's I don't, I'm 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 so having I wouldn't, I wouldn't cut it out entirely. So uh, yeah. but there are some people at the higher levels as well that do everything back end, but of course mm -hmm. you kind of. You're missing all the fun of playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's look at the same, but then in the forehand. It's basically okay. the same. You're still stepping in with your left foot. Uh -huh. and then everything else is basically the same. You're pushing, you're going up, down. Okay. And then you can use your body mo body's momentum to play deep, or you okay. can stop and, and try to keep sure. Going. And then the same thing with side. Or the top of the bat. Okay. Oh. Like this can also help because, for example, now if I want to play down the line, I have to kind of contort my body, right, or move more to the side. But if I go with the head first, oh becomes, yeah, the whole side is open. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. okay. <laughs> Oh man. Yes. 
sometimes without noticing we clip the table as well so that that can happen sometimes oh yeah i got I'm, i don't know I don't, I don't hear it i used to hear it when i do it but i think i've been hearing it lately yeah but sometimes when it's really light uh, no yeah i don't know oh. sometimes it seems it's, uh, make the noise maybe maybe yeah or maybe it's at the same time as the ball bouncing on the bat and then that's true too kind of cancel each other out maybe it's a similar sound as well well it's not it's a bit different that's quite good like uh, you're more confident on your forehand pushing like from the beginning mm -hmm. uh, able to to restrain your stroke a little bit better so again, it's the same. Uh, the more that you use your body to guide, the easier it's going to be. But that's, that's so, um, create like a, well, you actually already have the, uh, the drills, right? So, the what? You do now are the beginner drills, and they're uh -huh. slightly slower, right? And they do not, they don't have any variety. Mm -hmm. placement. So this allows you to really focus on the stroke itself. But when it comes to match play, you need variation, right? And then you need to adapt to it, but that's like the, the next step. But you've already done this, so you can, once you feel like you're a little bit secure with, the, with those basic strokes, you can go on to the, to the basic drills, uh -huh. the beginner drills, uh -huh. and then you can start with maybe two forehands, two backhands, and then you okay. can see Maybe slow it down. I don't know if you know how to slow it down with the. Yeah, well, um, yeah, is it? Yeah, I've slowed it down, but so, sometimes it just changes the angle. Uh, maybe I hit okay, the wrong. Yeah, yeah. So, no. So, um, slowing it down actually is like seconds per launch, but you don't have to do it that way. What you can do to slow everything down is you go, you don't see it right now, but if you go all the way to the left, you know, the three dots uh -huh. about the plus sign, and then uh -huh. you will see time scale. And time scale at one is the normal time scale. If you put it, okay. it slow. And then all of oh. the strokes will come at a slower pace. Like they will come at the same speed at you, but there will be more time in between the strokes. Right? Oh, okay. That's the easiest way to kind of adapt um, time scale. the time scale. Exactly. So, yeah. And honestly, like you seem to be controlling this quite well. And, and again, you like you can you can play with catching it later, and then really going under the ball, which is like uh, slicing, chopping, and adding backspin, or you mm -hmm. can try to just really push it faster. Right. Right. And once you get a feeling for that, and somebody serves something that you can recognize what's in it, mm -hmm. something like this, you can win points outright with like a very simple stroke. Right. Right. I think a lot of what, what you said earlier about not being like just in the heat of the moment and then you panic because I, you know, you don't trust that you're doing it the right way. Maybe uh, I feel like that's yeah. a lot of, of the work. That's, that's also why these uh, ball machine drills can help because they can try. Like it doesn't happen right away. It actually happens after a long time uh, in general. But it can it can get rid of some bad habits. But then you, of course, what you're doing with the ball launcher, you can really focus on those habits and try to avoid them. And the well, more. That's the ball machines I learned how to somebody that's really a fast serve that doesn't usually work against me. I, yeah, I can usually, you know, it, it might take me a couple of points, but I can get it down, and then they're not usually ready, you know, for the return. And that's what taught me how to do it was just turning the ball machine and just going to town with it. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. So that's basically how it works. So you get used to, like, instead of the strokes that you had before, uh, these two strokes they become like your. Your, your basic thing that you start off of. And if you don't know what to do, if you're surprised, you do the good stroke instead of the one that uh, you were uh, using before. It doesn't happen from one day to the next. It's a slow, it's a lot, it's a, well, slow, it picks up. In the beginning, right. it's like, oh, you get rid of it, but then you have a good basic stroke. And then actually you can start going very fast to like brushing yeah. more, you know, playing a little bit harder. You can build off of it. Once you, once you have the basics down, all right, let's take a look at your serves, like you said. Okay. So usually I'll just, I will, that, uh, use, I use that one sometimes, uh, the front. Uh, um, 
and the backhand I don't I don't I don't do many back to the backhands I usually I usually just yeah you know faster obviously but all right so, no rhyme so, or reason so that's also a thing that can get you to in a lot of trouble very fast if you if you learn to control the spin in your serve so yesterday as well like with a closer to 2000 player um she was also doing something like this a little bit faster a little bit deeper so it can be more annoying but it was this right mm, um, that's basically what mine is right there try to keep it low over the net but it want is this mm -hmm. right so how how well I, you probably saw it in a video already but how you learn how to deal with the spin is right, right. Mm -hmm. like this right you learn to spin it up mm -hmm. because if you don't really know how to grab the ball it will just kind of drop off right so you need enough acceleration to actually brush the ball so go ahead and try and see if you yeah. right. so I'll, I'll show you what you're doing so okay. this is also why you have a little bit of trouble in, in your forehand topspin because because you I think you can't really believe that you can pull the ball right <laughs> you're doing this right which is flat which is why it's going right so you have to trust that you, you also see when I do this even if it's soft the ball mm -hmm. moves that way so if you want to move it up you need to ch change your angle and you don't have to start like this and then change the angle no just straight this angle mm -hmm. right no, actually actually well, yeah now you're doing this which is possible as well but it's harder but like no no <laughs> same direction as you like this oh Right. Now you see it drop off a bit because you're a bit scared of it. So really accelerate into the ball when you hit it. No, no, like this, like this. Wrong. There, because the moment that you touch, you slow down. So, um, trying to think of an analogy. Uh, when you slow, mm -hmm. heavy, it goes up to high, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's up to fast, right? Mm -hmm. So, you can add as much spin as you want without the ball going fast. If you just actually just hit the outside and instead of giving momentum upwards, you're just making it spin, right? So, yeah. right. a bit like uh, how do you call it? Doll. These, these children's games, like you put them on the table and they do like this, and then they start oh, turning. Tops. tops. So that's exactly, yeah, exactly. Kind of like those things. <laughs> And that's the spinning part. But mm -hmm. if you and you also move towards something else, uh -huh. right? if you would use that same amount of power that you have in your fingers to move it forward, that's, that's what happens when you do when you do this, right? When you when you just play upwards. But mm -hmm. yeah, you just you just brush the outer side of the countertop, right? Right? <laughs> and you make it spin without it shooting off. Right? right. If, if you it, you can go very fast without it going away if you just do it in a way that it that it that it brushes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like mm -hmm. that's the idea. So in this sense, everything in spin is basically that. So instead of going through the ball, try to hit the side and make mm -hmm. it spin. Spin. Okay. So that's something that you can work on like this. This is just to get the for it, right? Because oh. Okay. How I create it, this is how I cancel it out, right? Create it, cancel it uh, out. Okay, yeah, yeah. Then if you want to do the same thing on the table, instead mm -hmm. of making it backwards, you, you make the traject trajectory go there, right? Mm. Okay. Then, yeah. So when I want to go straight up, Angle was mm -hmm. like this. If I want that, it's like this. So you're basically 
almost straight below the ball. Yeah. All right. Right more flat. You're kind of hitting it, right? You're still mm -hmm. hitting. Mm -hmm. You just you just want to the underside of the ball, just by brushing. You don't have to do it every serve because the serves that you do are very useful as well. You don't right. Have on it, so right? You can see also the ball turning because there's not that much on it. But then learning how to do this, mm -hmm. a whole variety of other serves that you can start to work on. Just really grabbing the ball and brushing it, right? And then I, I saw you do something like this as well. Uh -huh. so it, like this, it's mm -hmm. almost the same as this. The way that you do it because you hit it quite flat, so there's not a lot of spin on either side or backspin. But then you learn how to and also do it, do it to the side. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's not um, that's something you just have to work on a bit and get used to. It's the easiest way to do really this because then after a while you just uh, that, just I see what you mean. I didn't understand before. But I think I see what you're saying about canceling it out. So if I could get, so that's how you get comfortable with this. And like yeah. the other thing I try to do is this, right? The top spin part, because mm -hmm. I, uh, because the reason why it doesn't work that well in that direction is because it's away from your body, right? Mm -hmm. That's also a serve that you can do, by the way, to go away for your, from your body, but it's much harder. So that's why I always start the other direction because going that direction, you have much more space or across your body than away from your body. It's much harder. Okay. All right. But it all comes down to that, that same thing, right? Once, once you get the brush down, you will notice that the pattern of the ball, instead of going up like this, more straight, right? Because you really brushed it well, it will not jump. Uh -huh. You brushed it, it will go straight in a straight line. At that point, you want to make sure that you hit the ball more or less at the height of the net. So when it touches the table, uh -huh. it comes to the same height. Okay. Hit it too high, you know? It's going to go on the net. You know, it will go long, right? Okay. The idea is to hit it at the same level of the That's it. Without yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without okay. much about the net and stuff, I would really, you know, focus on this and then creating enough speed. You can even let it bounce very high and mm -hmm. just, it comes back with the spin, right? Yeah, I've tried to do that forever. I can't do that. <laughs> That's because you do this, right? Uh, and when you actually do the brushy thing, uh, so that it will start stop coming back. Once you, once you get a feeling for that, mm -hmm. so it's basically the same thing. You still want to go upwards, and then it will start coming back. Better, 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 better. Yeah, it was coming back. So in this case, you, you just want to finish up, right? Because you're, you're just looking. That's good. <laughs> yeah, well, I tried to do that for hours one time. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. I can explain you a little bit what the next steps would be so you can keep, keep an eye on it. I did it. <laughs> yeah. Very good. So I'll actually start on this side, right? Okay, come over here. You probably start maybe on videos as well. It's the reason why a lot of people kind of play from the same side is they keep the forehand open for the next attack, right? They keep right, up. right. And also, this is a very good position to add any kind of effect to it. Mm -hmm. With the back end, this one, for example, is very hard to really, because you can't really use your, your, your wrist in it. So you can make everything look more or less the same, because from here to here, it all looks the same, and then you can add side, you know, you can do all these things and people only see it at the last moment. So I should always line up right where you're at right now and I serve pretty well. You don't have to, but that's something that you can think of. Like when you do this serve, you know, to do it from this side. And of course so you have you to get over here fast. But right. you know, basically, like my body now is my left side is back. And the idea is that you do this way. You do the serve, and while you're doing it, you step 
you start the position, right? So you serve, and then you're ready. Okay, yeah, yeah. Serves themselves. There's two things. There's, there's, there's one basic serve that is always good, basically, mm -hmm. almost always. And there's two types of serves that you want to use to surprise your opponent or to put them up, right? Actually, using all of them is what makes it hard for them to get used to any of your serves. So, mm -hmm. this one, well, the basic one is actually the one that barely bounces twice. Mm -hmm. First bounce here, second bounce, close to the line. Usually, only they could play through the table and then it wouldn't do much damage, but that's, that's finished now, right? So, mm -hmm. so now, when the second bounce comes here, it means that they either have to push here, which is a mm -hmm. ball for you once you get used to it, right? It's much harder to flick from here because you're you're deeper in. So when it's really short, it becomes very easy to flick it or to open up the sides, right? Because you get a lot of that. Here, a lot of options. Let's go long, and they're confident and they can spin it up. You don't actually, actually, you never want the ball. You don't want it to happen too much. The ball to bounce here, and you just barely, like, just get over it. So, what's the what's what are the other two options? The other two options is to make the bounce very short when they're not expecting. It. Like I said, if you're expecting it, you can flick. And they get they get a lot of options, but right. if they're always expecting this serve. A half uh, long one, then you all of a sudden with enough backspin you put it like even shorter. They have to mm -hmm. scramble a bit to get to it, right? Right, right. And then maybe then they're ready for that one, and then you get to the next one, which is um, like a fast one that bounces mm -hmm. this. And then the combination of this is like when they're prepared to when they're trying to prepare to get this long one, uh -huh. be fast yeah. enough to get the short one. Right, but then if you notice, no, actually they're getting ready for the long one, and they can still get there. Then it's always a good option to do like the ones that bounce barely twice, because that's always to deal with, right? So now you're just using, you're just trying to find spin on it in the beginning until 2,000, 2,200. That will be enough, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. you start picking up more. You have to think more about variety. So it's it's good to think about it now. You can work on all of those kind of serves from the from the. Right? Keep it really short. Maybe sometimes mm -hmm. effect. If they think there's effect on it, mm -hmm. maybe then the next time you put a bit more and they put it in the net, right? mm -hmm. the variety of kind of spins that you put can be important as well. Okay. Same, same I said for uh, pushing, that you can go to the sides to make it bounce lower, is the same for serves. So when you go, Out a little bit, okay. Right, and it also allows you to put more force in it without it flying off. Okay. Right? If if you just do all your force and backspin, well, actually in the game it works quite well, but <laughs> in real life it doesn't. But um, you can keep it short, still add a lot of to the side. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy. So, and what I do as well, but that's. Uh, level is I toss it high, and in real life, and in this game, the actual velocity of the ball coming down, even when I hit it to the side, it creates a bit of backspin because it has this velocity and hits the it hits the bat and it starts turning like this. Mm -hmm. Right? So that mm -hmm. people don't expect. So just so there's a lot that you can do with it. You know, there's a lot of different levels still, but for now, just right. Okay. And to keep it low, mm -hmm. this one. What I do actually is I use my chest for this one. Mm -hmm. So I use mm -hmm. my chest just a little bit extra, and you could use a little bit of wrist. Well, okay. I saw you do this, but like mm -hmm. forearm, mm -hmm. enough to to really uh, brush it well. You could do it with just your wrist, but then you have to go through your knees, which is, you know, yeah, a bit tiring. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. You will. yeah. I, I think this has helped me a lot already. I, I can just tell, especially like with the backhand, getting my body in front of it, it made all the difference in the world. It just, I, it was under control. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Did you want me to try this? Or are you just telling me that, showing me? No, tell me I didn't understand what you said. Oh, I, yeah, you've been breaking up a little too. Was you was you wanting me to do that, or was you just showing me what, what I need to do there with the server? No, the service that was like, that's for the next okay. step. Now, um, I always say like keep playing multiplayer matches well even if you start losing in the beginning because you're changing your, your style mm -hmm. a little bit uh, but it keeps you prepared for the random shots that they give you right mm -hmm. because i play uh, close to 3000 uh, matches mm -hmm. the balls are very right mm -hmm. like the quality can be even better and it can be even easier for me to see it than when i play against lower level players right? so the reason that you're playing there's a lot of people that do yeah. You can keep playing against them as well, so you don't lose your touch for that. So you still understand and you can mm -hmm. start working on using the new the new strokes that you have on those things. You're right. Only train with the ball launcher. Yeah, it's it's how you know, say precise place, right? Right. All right. I lost my right controller. Okay. <laughs> it's about to die too. It was giving me a warning while ago. <laughs> yeah. well, I should have thought of that before I started. Anyway. Okay. Uh, I will send you today or tomorrow like a little summary of, of what we discussed. Okay. There will right. be some as well so you can see people performing the same strokes in real life. You probably already know some of those okay. videos, I imagine. Okay. I watch all your videos and they come out usually. I think I've, I think I've seen them all. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah, I mean mine. Yeah, I use videos about I use video of Malone, for example. You know, uh, doing the strokes because, of course, he moves much better than I do. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to do exactly the same, but it shows you the ideal form. You know, and how they use legs and hips and shoulders. It's uh, it's very nice to see right what the ideal is. Um, and, uh, yeah, the person of yesterday, I made like a separate uh, drill file, but since you already have mine, it's, I mean, a separate drill file is basically a simplified version, so she could find everything easily. But since you're yeah. already used to it, um, I would say you can use the beginner drills, which is just the slightly slower backhand and forehand counters and the backhand and forehand push. Uh -huh. And then, you know, just to get control of the strokes and how you move. And then after that, okay. look into the basic drills whenever you want, uh, see if okay. you can the speed maybe slow it down a bit with the time scale okay uh, all right well i think i'll give it a few weeks three or four weeks maybe and keep working on all of this that we talked about today and then i might see if i can get another one when, when, yeah. when i feel like yeah. i've gotten somewhere where i need to get a little more yeah and i give a lot of information in, in one session so i get that uh, it makes a lot of sense um yeah, that's also why I say 45 minutes because 45 minutes, like your head can do more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely, I feel like, and now at least I'll be a little more confident in what I'm doing. Yeah. 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 And really, for example, to explain all of this, this this might take half a year because <laughs> yeah. because you take two hours and while you're playing, you, you need to be training while you're explaining because they mm -hmm. can't go home and use the ball launcher, right? Right. So right. Here, very fast and I explain a lot of stuff and then at home you can you can really train mm -hmm. right. this makes it a whole new world it, it possibilities are endless yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all right well I won't keep you I appreciate it I appreciate it too and all right it was nice to meet you nice to meet you too okay well I, 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 you don't see my hand anymore so. <laughs> all right have a good one yeah you thank you thank you